For centuries, the Great Pyramids were thought to be nothing more than royal tombs. But new evidence suggests they may have served a far more technological purpose. Recent studies of limestone conductivity, underground chambers, and magnetic anomalies hint that the pyramids could have been part of a vast energy network powering ancient Egypt. If true, this discovery could completely rewrite everything we thought we knew about how one of the world's earliest civilizations thrived. It sounds impossible. Yet new scientific findings and reinterpreted evidence are forcing archaeologists to ask questions once dismissed as fantasy. From electromagnetic anomalies deep within the Great Pyramid of Giza to geological studies revealing conductive materials embedded in its very core, clues are mounting that the ancient Egyptians may have engineered something far more advanced than anyone imagined. The story begins at the Great Pyramid, Khufu's masterpiece, standing for over 4,500 years. In 2024, a research team from Germany and Russia used electromagnetic resonance testing to probe the structure. What they found left scientists stunned. The pyramid's internal chambers and passageways appeared to concentrate electromagnetic energy within specific areas, particularly the so-called King's Chamber and the subterranean passages beneath it. This wasn't random. The pyramid's dimensions, alignment and materials seemed to form a natural resonator capable of amplifying electromagnetic waves. To the ancient builders, this might not have been a coincidence, but a deliberate design. Recent analysis of the pyramid's core stones reveals that they were made from limestone, rich in quartz crystal, while its base rests on a granite platform that naturally contains piezoelectric properties. When subjected to pressure, such as the weight of millions of limestone blocks, granite can generate a subtle electrical charge. Combine that with the pyramid's precise alignment to magnetic north, and a pattern begins to emerge. The Great Pyramid may have functioned as a massive energy capacitor, harnessing the Earth's natural forces. At first glance, this sounds like pseudoscience, but modern physics suggests otherwise. The Earth itself produces a constant flow of telluric current, natural electrical energy traveling through the ground. If the pyramid's base interacted with these currents, it could have channeled and concentrated them within its chambers. And the mysterious copper fittings found in the upper shafts of the king's chamber, long thought to be purely symbolic, suddenly take on a new meaning. Could they have served as conductive terminals, directing this unseen energy through the structure? The discovery reignited an old but tantalizing theory, that the pyramids were part of an ancient system for collecting, storing, and perhaps even transmitting energy. Ancient Egyptian texts often spoke of divine power, or sekum, flowing through the temples and monuments, a sacred life force connecting heaven and earth. Many archaeologists dismissed these writings as spiritual metaphors. But what if sekum described something literal, a natural energy the Egyptians had learned to harness and integrate into their architecture? Further evidence comes from the enigmatic Black Pyramid of Amenemhat III at Dashur. Though considered structurally unstable today, researchers discovered traces of unusual materials embedded near its foundation, deposits of an unknown crystalline compound that appear to respond to subtle electric fields. The pyramid's layout mirrors the geometry of resonant cavities used in modern energy storage research, suggesting that its builders were experimenting with energy control centuries before the concept of electricity even existed. And the mysteries don't end there. In 2023, ground-penetrating radar scans beneath the Giza Plateau detected subsurface tunnels filled with high-salinity water, a natural conductor of electricity. Some researchers now propose that the Nile's ancient course, which once flowed much closer to the pyramids, could have played a role in generating or distributing this energy. If true, the pyramids might have been built along geomagnetic nodes, sites where Earth's natural energy was most intense. But if the pyramids truly channeled power, what was it used for? Here the debate turns speculative, yet fascinating. Some believe the energy was spiritual, designed to amplify rituals, preserve the Pharaoh's soul, or connect with the cosmos. Others suggest more practical applications, lighting within the temples, electroplating gold artifacts, or preserving food in underground chambers cooled by resonant airflow systems. These aren't just guesses. 
archaeological evidence of copper tools with microscopic gold coating and soot-free tomb ceilings hint that the ancient Egyptians may have achieved feats of craftsmanship and illumination using techniques we still don't fully understand. Even more remarkable are recent LIDAR and thermal imaging studies showing temperature anomalies across the Great Pyramid's surface, hotspots that cannot be explained by sunlight alone. These readings imply internal heat differentials consistent with energy flow or internal air movement, possibly part of a long-lost system of ventilation or power generation. Whatever the mechanism, it was sophisticated, far beyond the primitive methods once assumed of ancient builders. Skeptics argue that none of this proves the pyramids were power plants, and they're right. There's no ancient inscription declaring, this was our generator. But as more data emerges, the idea that these monuments were purely symbolic seems increasingly incomplete. The Egyptians were master engineers who understood the relationships between geometry, nature, and the cosmos. Their temples and tombs weren't just stone piles. They were living structures designed to channel energy, physical, spiritual, or both. Perhaps that's why, even today, visitors standing inside the Great Pyramid describe a strange hum an almost tangible vibration echoing through the stone. Maybe they're feeling what the ancients once did, the pulse of the earth itself, captured and amplified by one of humanity's greatest creations. If the pyramids truly once powered ancient Egypt, it forces us to question how much of the past we've misunderstood, and how much power the earth itself still holds. Because in one remote desert, a massive crater has been burning continuously for over 50 years, its flames refusing to die. Join me as we uncover the fiery mystery scientists still can't fully explain. In the heart of the Karakum Desert of Turkmenistan lies a site so bizarre, so otherworldly, that travelers who stumble across it often describe it as looking like a portal to another dimension. A giant pit, more than 200 feet wide, with walls that drop steeply into a blazing inferno. Flames roar out of the earth itself, licking the desert sky, and at night its glow can be seen for miles across the barren steppe. Locals call it the door to hell. Scientists call it the Darvaza gas crater. But one question still haunts it after half a century. Why has it burned continuously for more than 50 years? To answer that, we must rewind to the early 1970s, deep in the Soviet era. The deserts of Turkmenistan were seen not as empty wastelands, but as treasure troves of natural gas. Soviet engineers drilled relentlessly across the Karakum, searching for reserves to power their growing industrial ambitions. But near the village of Darvaza, something unexpected happened. When their rig struck a pocket of gas, the ground beneath it collapsed, swallowing the equipment into a gaping hole. What had once been solid earth suddenly became a fiery abyss. A dangerous cloud of methane began seeping into the air. Here's where the mystery takes a sharp turn. Faced with the risk of a poisonous gas leak, the geologists made a daring decision. They ignited the crater, believing the flames would consume the gas in just a few weeks. It was meant as a quick fix, a temporary sacrifice to keep the surrounding communities safe. But weeks passed, then months, then years. And today, over five decades later, the fire is still burning, consuming a seemingly endless supply of natural gas hidden beneath the Earth's crust. What was intended as a controlled blaze has become one of the longest lasting infernos on the planet. But how is it possible for the fire to continue for so long? The answer lies beneath the Karakum itself. Turkmenistan holds the world's sixth largest reserves of natural gas. The crater at Darvaza sits directly above a massive underground reservoir, one so vast that the flames may never find an endpoint. Unlike an ordinary campfire that dies when the wood is gone, this pit is fed by a colossal energy source that seeps up through fissures, sustaining the blaze.